Well, welcome to Yankee Stadium, everybody. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy. The Red Sox and Yankees look to wrap up their three-game series today under cloudy skies at Yankee Stadium to begin the day. And we take a look at the Red Sox starting lineup today brought to you by Dodge. Johnny Damon at the top of the Red Sox order at center field. Mark Bellhorn at third base. David Ortiz, the DH. Manny Ramirez, one of the three home runs the Red Sox had off Javier Vasquez in their first meeting. Devin Millar in right. Jason Veritek doing the catching. David McCarty at first base. Cesar Crespo at second. And Pokey Reese at shortstop as the Red Sox face Javier Vasquez. Vasquez 2-1 and one on the season with a 2.53 ERA. Both those wins coming against the Chicago White Sox. The loss against the Red Sox in that game at Fenway back on the 16th five and a third nine hits and uh, one earned run excuse me four earned runs in that game now Vasquez pitching on three days rest only for the second time in his major league career and it just kind of goes to show how the state of the Yankees right now with their pitching staff it's very rare it, early in April I should say late in April I have a guy come back on three days rest but as I mentioned in the open Joe Torrey does not want to fall four and a half games behind the Red Sox. Yankee defense is brought to you by a New England Toyota dealers. It'll be a rod at the third base today. Derek G to the shortstop Enrique Wilson at second and Jason Giambi at first great play there by a rod in that ball game yesterday left to right Hideki Matsui Bernie Williams and Gary Sheffield or hey Posada doing the catching. Umpires Phil Cuzzy has the plate. James Hoy at first base. Jerry Crawford at second and Brian Onoro had the plate yesterday at third base today. Johnny Damon is introduced as he climbs into the box on the left side. Where available, this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Buenas tardes, amigos. And Damon is in. Vasquez towing the rubber. And we are ready for baseball from Yankee Stadium. As the first pitch misses to Damon, four ball one. Johnny hitting at 283, no homers and 10 runs batted in. And his six game hitting streak snapped here yesterday. As this one has popped up foul, Posada racing back. And he will almost have a play in and out of the glove as he reached into the first row of seats. Uh, no fan interference either. When the catcher reaches into the crowd, he does so at his own risk. If a fan reaches out over the fence and interferes with Posada, then that's a different story. But clearly here, Posada going into the stands and can't quite make the play. So Damon stays alive with a count of one and one. Johnny Damon, as we mentioned, had his six-game hitting streak snapped yesterday, but still has hit safely in 10 of his last 12 games, and over the last 12 games, hitting at 333. Evens up now at 2-2 two and two to Damon. In that last outing for Vasquez against Chicago, he went eight innings in that game, allowed one run run, and threw 113 pitches. Well, the full count to Johnny Damon. The lights are on here at Yankee Stadium to begin the game with the, the cloud cover here. And some mention of precipitation perhaps later this afternoon, but uh, kind of gloomy right now. Damon pops this up. Posada again charging over this time to the Red Sox dugout. This time he makes the catch, leaning into the dugout, front number one. Well, certainly Posada's loose here early in the ball game. Had to go back to the stands to try to make the play. Now to the Red Sox dugout. He'll reach right over the railing. Well, that's one positive thing to have those railings out there. It certainly protects some of the players. In that case, Posada, instead of going down the steps, can actually balance himself on the railing and make the catch. So Johnny Damon is disposed of, and it brings up Mark Bellhorn. Hitting under 200 at 196. Yeah, taking the first pitch strike from Javier Vasquez. Red Sox today will see the fastball about 90, 91 miles an hour. A changeup that'll throw both to right and left handed hitters and the curveball. Bellhorn able to get the sacrifice fly in the 12th inning yesterday that scored Manny Ramirez for the eventual game winning run. 
He started off the series very well as well going three for five on Friday night. And of course his 18 walks lead the American League. Has a 408 on base percentage. Swing and a miss at that offering and it evens up at two and two. Don, I still think by the time the year's over, this guy right here is going to be the best pitcher on the Yankee staff. He's got great stuff. Well, the question marks really revolved around him was how he was going to do on the big stage here in New York, and he has answered that so far. And strikes out Bellhorn for out number two. I don't know if it's because he's working on three days rest, but it seems like that he's underneath his fastball a little bit early and it's taken off in the strike zone. See that fastball just up and away from Mark Bellhorn. So a foul out and a strikeout, and that takes us to David Ortiz with two down, nobody on for the Red Sox. Ortiz at 265, four homers and 14 runs batted in. David had a double here yesterday and has an extra base hit in each of his last six games. Five doubles and a home run. A strike and it evens up in one and one. Javier Vasquez, 27 years of age from Puerto Rico. Ortiz lifts it over the glove of Derek Jeter who had to elevate and had it just go up over his glove in the shallow left center field and David Ortiz on with two outs in the inning. That's the curveball there from the Vasquez and just a little spinning line drive that Jeter cannot quite come up with. Perfectly timed by Jeter but just up over his head for the base hit to David Ortiz. He threw him a curve and he hit a curve. <laughs> Here is Manny Ramirez as Ortiz now extending that hitting streak to seven games with a base hit here in the first inning. Manny yesterday played in his 1,400th Major League game. And it was his double that led off the 12th inning and led to that run for the Red Sox in the eventual victory. Yesterday also marked the ninth multi hit game of the season for Manny Ramirez. Riding a five game hitting streak of his own. He got his fourth home run of the season here on Friday night. Which was his 19th in his career at Yankee Stadium which he did not grow up far from Yankee Stadium. And Doing his business here as a visitor in Yankee Stadium. And up top, and it's one and two. And again, you see that fastball's 90 miles an hour, but it seems to be uh, taking off on these Red Sox hitters. Up about let a high to Ramirez. And he jolts one foul off the right side. It's still one and two. And he over the last five games, hitting at 381, eight for his last 21. And he's hit safely in 14 of the last 15 games. Foul ball off to our right. Couldn't help but think Vasquez with two strikes and across all the Yankee Stadium standing, hoping for the strikeout. That's kind of a tradition here. I don't think he had that very much up in Montreal. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would say he didn't, though. And that, as I mentioned earlier, I think that was one of the biggest question marks was the success that he had unheralded, but it was done in Montreal. And some wonder whether or not he'd be able to perform in the big lights of New York. And he has done that in the early going. And he pops it up foul. Posada on the run again. Giambi over by the Yankees dugout. And Posada can't make the catch. A 
The second one that has kicked off his glove in the inning. Well, you know, that's not Posada's fault right there. I mean, Giambi's got to be calling him off. That's a much easier play for the first baseman than for a catcher. Giambi's just looking at Posada, and he should be taking charge, calling him off. The ball's coming back to him. Vasquez was almost there to pick it off the grass. But there's no way Posada should have been uh, responsible for making that play. He has been very busy in the top of the first inning. Yeah, we're going to tie him out early and the pitcher. One and two to Manning, two down. David Ortiz at first base being held on by Jason Giambi. And the one two gets Ramirez. And he strikes out to conclude the inning. Two strikeouts for Javier Vasquez. The Red Sox strand the runner. Boston gets nothing. Yankees coming up. Well, moments ago, as Pedro Martinez walked out to the hill, the Yankee faithful welcomed him. He has become the number one villain here uh, at Yankee Stadium. Pedro Martinez returning to the hill for the first time here at Yankee Stadium since Game 7 of the American League Championship Series. And he's ready to work with Derek Jeter, Bernie Williams, and Alex Rodriguez. Scheduled to bat here in the last half of the first inning. Pedro Martinez with the record of two and one of course coming off the win last time out against Toronto against the Yankees nine and eight in his career with a two point eight eight although he's pitched better here at Yankee Stadium than at Fenway Park here at the stadium six and three with a two point four nine and as we see the numbers career against Pedro Martinez Sheffield with good numbers but uh, of course don't forget Enrique Wilson who always seems to get a couple of hits off him. Well, Wilson 10 for 20 against Pedro Martinez as Derek Jeter is ahead 3 and 0 Jeter in the midst of the longest slump of his career is hitless in his last 21 at bats and 0 for 5 here yesterday. And there's a strike and it's 3 and 1 cooler conditions today than yesterday uh, much cooler today with the breeze still blowing. Jose Cruz Jr. in the midst of a terrible slump also for the Devil Rays. But you just don't see this from Derek Jeter, and that's why this 0 for 21 is the longest stretch of his career. The longest previous stretch in which he went hitless was 0 for 18, and you got to go back to 1997, then he did it again in 1999. And the payoff pitch to Jeter. And he stays alive. Pretty similar too to his last start. Pedro starting off with an awful lot of fastballs here to Jeter. That's the way he approached the game against the Toronto Blue Jays. His last fastball clocked at 88 miles an hour. That was interesting when Paul O'Neill was in here before the game saying virtually the same thing that he tried to do that against them earlier. Yeah, the difference was though he was doing it then with a 95 mile an hour fastball when uh, Paul O'Neill was facing Pedro. And Paul working next door with the Yes Network with Jim Cott, and Michael Kay. And they are still standing, Jerry, to begin the game. We only stand when we need runs. Again, the payoff pitch, and Jeter carves it foul again back into our right. Once again, the fastball, that time at 87 miles an hour. Looks like Jeter may have helped out a little bit here, chasing a high fastball from Pedro. That's a great camera shot behind home plate. Jeter strikes out Pedro Martinez striking him out to begin the afternoon. Let's take a look at the rest of the Yankee starting lineup brought to you by Rico. Bernie Williams batting second in center field a rod at third base Jason Giambi with two home runs in game seven against Pedro last year at first base Sheffield in right Posada does the catching Matt Suey in left Ruben Sierra the DH and Enrique Wilson at second base you mentioned 10 for 20 against Pedro Martinez in his career bats ninth. 
So one down and here's Bernie Williams to Hopper to first McCarty's up with it he'll need Pedro and Martinez there for out number two. The Red Sox defense is brought to you by Lexus and yesterday Pokey Reese uh, turning a great double play in that game for the Red Sox. It'd be Bellhorn Reese Crespo and McCarty in the infield Ramirez Damon and Millar in the outfield and Jason Veritek behind the plate is that double play yesterday Pokey Reese in a bases loaded situation getting the Red Sox out of the inning. So a strikeout and a ground out that takes us to a rod at 243 so far to begin the season. They hit a home run here yesterday off Bronson Arroyo for the first Yankees run and now starting to turn it around a little bit as a rod six game hitting streak. He was two for three here yesterday he walked twice. Now has 10 hits in his last 21 at bats. Around has won three consecutive AL home run titles and is off to a slow start in that regard this season with three so far. 40 or more home runs in each of the last three years for a rod. Uh, Pedro with the three one a rod reaches out lines it to right Millar moving in he dives and makes the catch. Millar in right field diving forward to Rob a rod of a hit. Into a short Pedro, a one, two, three, first inning, done with one, no score from Yankee Stadium. Back at Yankee Stadium, and Pedro Martinez threw the first two innings. Pedro throwing 14 pitches in the first and 12 in the second, so 26 through two innings. Relinquished his first hit to Gary Sheffield of the game, but uh, then got Posada and Matsui in succession. Cesar Crespo leading it off here in the visiting half of the third inning. Crespo, Reese, and Damon. Bunts at the 1 1. Posada out and fires to first. Wow, he threw a strike. The first base, even with Crespo diving in head first, he's out number one. He sure did. And watch how quickly Posada pounces from behind home plate to get on top of this bunt. Of course, he's the first one to know when he sees that back come around that it's going to be a bunt, and he just pops right out there quickly, spins around, and throws a strike over there to Giambi. Great play by Posada. So one down, and it brings up Pokey Reese. Jose Posada, elected to the All Star team last year for the second straight season, his fourth straight All Star selection, but it started two years in a row. Evens up at one and one to Pokey Reese. First career series for Pokey Reese at Yankee Stadium. He had not played here previously. Is the strike in there makes it one and two. Three quality pitches for Vasquez: the fastball, that curveball that he just threw to Reese, and of course the changeup. Waves at that pitch and strikes out. Already the fifth strikeout for Javier Vasquez. His strikeout high on the season is six, and he did that in his last outing against the Chicago White Sox, but uh, already five here this afternoon against the Red Sox. There's the curveball. Two strikeouts today on the curveball, two on the fastball, and one on the changeup. Look at the strikeout totals over the last three plus years in the major leagues, only behind Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling, and Kerry Wood, and ahead of Pedro Martinez. Johnny Damon stands in second time through the Red Sox order for Javier Vasquez. As Damon fouled out to Jorge Posada back in the first inning. Kurt Schilling leads the American League in strikeouts with 31. Pedro started the game with 21. 
And Pedro so far with two strikeouts. He's opened each of the first two innings the same way. He struck out Jeter to open up the first, and then he struck out Jason Giambi to open up the second inning. And then goes chasing after that pitch and is down one and two. Damon strikes out. They elevated and Damon goes after it. Sixth strikeout for Javier Vasquez. Two and a half done. We're scoreless from the stadium. Bottom of the third inning back at Yankee Stadium. Ruben Sierra leading off with a swing and a miss. Sierra getting the start in the DH spot today, batting eighth in the Yankees order. Enrique Wilson and Derek Jeter are expected in the end. This one right back off. Pedro kicks out towards Crespo, and the throw to first is in time. See how Pedro Martinez is. He appears to be fine. Right back up the middle. Pedro kicks it out towards second base. Looks like it gets him right off the uh, right foot, and then goes out toward uh, Crespo. Imagine the Yankees. I mean, <laughs> they've been struggling scoring runs. You get a ground ball like that. It looks like it's going up the middle. Pedro kick save and right to the second baseman for the out. You know, I was looking ahead for the Yankees in the next couple games. They have tomorrow off like we do, but things don't get any easier for New York. The Oakland A's are coming in. They have Pedro Martinez today, then Tim Hudson on Tuesday night to begin that series. Mark Mulder. On Wednesday and then Barry Zito on Thursday. So they get every bit of the big three for the Oakland A's. Yeah. This week. <laughs> the old one pitch to Enrique Wilson quickly has him down 0 and 2. The numbers we mentioned earlier 10 for 20 against Pedro and he strikes out. Pedro makes quick work of Enrique Wilson. Third strikeout for Pedro Martinez. I think Pedro's had enough of Enrique Wilson in his career. 10 for 20, as you man mentioned, Don, not even wasting an 0-2 pitch. He goes right to the fastball to pick up the strikeout. Enrique a tad tardy. Remember last year, one time Joe Torre actually let off Enrique Wilson in a game against Pedro Martinez. I remember that. Well, first time through the Yankees order, Pedro gave up one hit to Gary Sheffield. We now go second time through as Jeter gets his second look at Pedro. He struck out back in the first inning. Jeter ahead now, two and zero. Oh. Back to back cut fastballs for Pedro against Jeter. Jeter lifts one in the air to short right. Millar ranging in and making the catch. It's an enjoyable one-two-three inning for Pedro Martinez. We're through three, no score from Yankee Stadium. No score as we head to the fourth. Let's check in with Eric Freed. Don, plenty of questions to Yankees manager Joe Torre before the game. First and foremost, pitching Javier Vasquez on three days rest. Only the second time in his career. Torre talked to Vasquez again today. Vasquez assured him he feels fine. Everything was good in his side session. So far, so good. Six strikeouts through ten batters face, guys. Thanks very much, Eric. Mark Bellhorn. David Ortiz and Manny Ramirez to face Javier Vasquez here in the fourth inning. And as Eric mentioned, six strikeouts for Vasquez. He has not walked anyone yet. The Red Sox have had two base runners. David Ortiz with a single in the first inning. And Kevin Malai was hit by a pitch to begin the second inning. And nobody's gotten a second yet for Boston. Bellhorn who leads the league with 18 walks ahead of the count here, three and zero. And a strike to make it three and one. Ball 
for Bellhorn's 19th walk of the year. Well, each time the Red Sox win at Fenway Park, Hood donates $1,500 to the Hood Home Team Advantage Charity Program. The program benefits children's hospitals throughout New England. It's another season you can feel good about Hood. So Bellhorn doing what he does best this season anyway, and that's walking his 19th walk. The Red Sox with the lead runner on here in the fourth inning, and it brings up David Ortiz. Well, the wind may not be as gusty as it was yesterday, but it is considerably cooler here today at Yankee Stadium. Yes, it is. Yesterday was just a perfect afternoon for baseball. Temperatures up around, what, 70 degrees? Bright sunshine. Ortiz with a big swing and it's 0 and 2. Back to back change ups to start off David Ortiz. Fouls one off and swings and misses at the second change up. Ortiz extending his hitting streak to seven games with a base hit back in the first inning. Now 10 for his last 28 with two homers, four doubles, and five RBIs. Three call to David Ortiz. He stands looking at Phil Cuzzy. He can't believe it. He'll take with him the seventh strikeout for Vasquez. And a very slow walk back to the dugout for David Ortiz. Ortiz thinking this pitch was too high. But in the uh, real strike zone, that is a strike. Phil Cuzzy has heard it from both sides and he continues to hear it from Ortiz who is at the top step of the dugout on the near side closest to the umpire so he's not exactly gone away as he's still camped out there as Manny Ramirez swings and misses at the first pitch. Now yeah Cuzzy obviously today has a uh, pretty big strike zone and as long as he remains consistent then both uh, both teams can adjust to it but it's certainly a pitch's strike zone right now. Vasquez ahead of Ramirez 0 and 2. Well, he struck out back in the first inning. And he's not alone in that department today. Vasquez with seven strikeouts through three and a third inning. The Yankees fans hoping he can ring up another. First to check on Bellhorn is back in plenty of time. You know this standing with two strikes uh, going for the strikeout at Yankee Stadium this all started with Ron Guidry back in the 70s. He struck out a few people. Yeah I did. <laughs> Louisiana Lightning the 0 2 and he fouls it off the right side. Well, it's time now for the Aflac trivia question and our question today. Who holds the Red Sox record for most sacrifice flies in one game? We have the answer for you in the next half inning. Of course, Manny scoring on the sacrifice fly by Mark Bellhorn yesterday to give the Red Sox the go ahead run and the eventual winning run in the 12th at Yankee Stadium. Manny swings and hits one high in the air to left field. Matsui is looking up. It may never come down. A two-run home run for Manny Ramirez, his fifth of the year, and the Red Sox are out to the two-nothing lead.
When we see this replay, watch Manny Ramirez stay back with his hands. His foot, he's going to step out. It's a curveball, but his hands stay back. Look at his foot get out there, but look at the hands. They stay back, and he's able to drive that ball an awful long way. 0-2 mistake by Vasquez, and Ramirez jumps all over it. He's got such great balance, even on the breaking ball. Even though he was a little, the timing a little bit off with the step of his front foot, he still was able to keep the rest of his body back and drive that ball a long way. Amazing the lack of movement from his head as well. Yep. That's now 20 home runs for Manny Ramirez. As he has tied Rafael Palmero in that category. The only other place that Manny performs better is Sky Dome in Toronto, where he's had more home runs than here at Yankee Stadium. Well, the Red Sox have struck first with a two run home run here in the fourth inning as Millar grounds it foul outside a third. Millar was hit by a pitch in the second inning. And then was thrown out on a strike him out throw him out double play get kind of caught up between first and second and was tagged out by Jeter. Now full count to Millar. Millar is hit safely in six straight games, looking for his first hit of the afternoon. Take a look at again at that swing by Manny Ramirez and you'll see uh, his front foot how it kind of steps out but look at the rest of the body it stays back his hands stay back and that's why he's able to drive that ball such a long distance as you mentioned on that head very still. Manny yesterday after getting kind of buzzed inside had some tough at bats yesterday afternoon and boy he has started off well here today. And as Kevin Brown brought it right in tight to him yesterday Malaya lines it right to Jeter and there's two down. Sinking line drive to Derek Jeter that time little top spin line drive off the bat of Malaya. Those are not easy plays for infielders either. Two down now for Jason Veritek, who struck out swinging in the second inning. Well, that, that home run temporarily quieted things down here in the Bronx. Yeah, it really did. This place had been jumping right out of the gate today. And of course, the seven strikeouts for Vasquez has had them jumping through three plus innings. Well, the two run home run for Manny Ramirez as the Red Sox on top. This is to center field. Bernie Williams drifting back and over to make the catch and to retire Baratek. Manny Ramirez with his fifth home run of the year has given the Red Sox the 2 0 lead. Manny Ramirez has given the Red Sox a 2 0 lead. The league leaders are brought to you by Volvo, the official vehicle of the Red Sox. Well, Pedro Martinez and active career leaders, 9.59 as far as the base runners in nine innings. The least amount. Schilling is second and behind him at 10.22. Minimum 100 starts and a pretty impressive list. Bernie Williams to lead it off. He grounded out to first base his first time up. Through the first three innings, Pedro had thrown 34 pitches. And the Yankees have had only one base runner, Gary Sheffield, singling to center field in the second inning. And that has been it. Pedro has struck out three, he's not walked anyone.
Bradley Williams had been batting eighth in the Yankees order and he's moved up to the number two spot today. Yeah they had Matt Suey up in that uh, two spot yesterday he was 0 for 4 on the ball game. Bruni getting the shot up there today. Down and in and it's two and two now to Bernie Williams. He has just two hits in his last 23 at bats. A lot of those same kind of numbers for a lot of these Yankees hitters. This lineup is far too good to struggle for much longer. As Williams gets just a piece may have got the piece of Veritek as well. Well you mentioned Don you know they've got Pedro Martinez today they they've got the Oakland Athletics coming in with their big three early next week and the Red Sox go home to play Tampa now Tampa is certainly a much improved ball club but the favor uh, schedule certainly favors the Red Sox at this point and you think if the Red Sox win this ball game today they're four and a half games above the Yankees I know it's early I know it's April but you know it could quickly turn into a six seven game deficit. With the way things are set up next week. We can take a look at the matchup head to head. Last year, the Red Sox were 9 and 10. They played six games with New York already, and the Red Sox have already won five of those. So already a different story. In 2004, as Bernie Williams skies one to center, Damon back into his right. And there's the first out in the bottom of the fourth inning. It's time now for the Aflac trivia question answer from an inning ago. And the question is, who holds the Red Sox record for most sacrifice flies in one game? That is Russ Nixon with three on August 31st of 1965 at Washington in the second game of the doubleheader Red Sox 8-5 win. Nixon starting at catcher went one for two with three RBIs. Dick Raditz was the winning pitcher for Boston before 6,245 fans in Washington. Good crowd, huh? Yeah, it wasn't exactly capacity. One out for A. Roddy lined out to right field on the great catch by Kevin Millar back in the first inning. One now to A Rod. A Rod quietly now has a six game hitting streak as he's started to pick it up lately after a very slow start. Line this time into right field for a base hit. We'll extend that hitting streak to seven games. That's the second hit of the day off Pedro Martinez. One out, one on, and here is Jason Giambi, who was thoroughly frustrated by his first at bat as he struck out looking and had words for Phil Cuzzy, the home plate umpire, on the way by. One of three Pedro Martinez strikeouts. Last year, Giambi becoming only the fourth Yankee to record 40 home run seasons in each of his first two years in the Yankees uniform, joining Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Mickey Mantle. And as he carves that one foul off the left side. Also had 120 base on balls last year, fourth player in franchise history to draw at least 120 walks. And that list is also of the elite kind, joining Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Mickey Mantle again as far as the base on balls go. 
Hayrod taking a fake towards second base uh, on that last pitch, and you could see Veritek coming out of his crouch quickly, but the ball was uh, fouled off. Well, the rain has started here at Yankee Stadium. The shift as Bellhorn is over at shortstop. Reese Crespo and McCarty on the right side. Well, the rain has started here. Certainly not strong enough to delay us at the moment. We got to think a little bit about uh, the starting pitchers here. Should there be a delay? Obviously, Vasquez coming back on three days rest. We don't want to waste the work that Pedro Martinez has done here in the early going as well as he has struck out three and given up just two hits and so far has had it going. Take a look at the hit zone for uh, Jason Giambi where he's hot and where he's not. And right now not hot in a lot of spots certainly up in and down and away. Just don't leave the ball out of the middle of the plate. <laughs> there goes a rod at first the pitch. The throw is not in time. So he stole a base for A Rod. Great jump by A Rod, too, over at first base. He picks up his second steal of the season. It's something the Yankees uh, probably will try a little bit more of uh, as they struggle offensively, try to generate some runs by steals, maybe some hit and runs. Joe Torre loves that kind of baseball, but the lineup he's got really uh, is not conducive to doing a lot of those things. 17 stolen bases last year for Alex Rodriguez, his second of the season this year. See, now you see the shift has changed. They have to put Bellhorn closer to third base now because of A Rod at second. If he was in that same position, A Rod just walked into third base with a steal. Alex Rodriguez stole 46 bases back in 1998 for the Seattle Mariners. He's had a heck of an at bat as he fouls off another. Veritek will go out and talk to Pedro with a full count and runner at second base. That at bat to uh, A Rod, he did not see one fastball in that at bat. He started him with three straight curveballs and then a changeup to follow, and that's when the, the pitch at A Rod got the base hit to the opposite field line. A Rod's seen a he's seen a load of curveballs from Red Sox pitching in that series last week at Fenway and again here at Yankee Stadium. Although he has swung the bat much better in this series. The eighth pitch of the bat coming up on the three-two in the air down the left field line on the move is Ramirez, but that'll end up back into the crowd. And just as he threw a lot of off speed pitches to A Rod, a lot of fastballs to Giambi. Giambi a little bit late on this fastball from Pedro Martinez. That ball is right over the heart of the plate. That's that 400 zone that we looked at. That's the wrong place. <laughs> so a pretty good battle here between Giambi and Pedro Martinez. The payoff pitch. In the air to left center field. Manny Ramirez wandering over. And Manny will make the catch. A-Rod bluffing as he tagged at second. He'll return with now two outs in the inning. They'll go a long way that way to get it out of here at Yankee Stadium. So Pedro wins that battle as he gets Giambi to fly out. Two down, and here's Gary Sheffield, who has one of only two hits today for New York. Sheffield singled in a center field back in the second inning.
Pedro Martinez has had to throw 21 pitches in this inning. The most by far that he's had to deal in any inning previously. And he falls behind 2 and 0. Best fastball of the day there from Pedro, too. That one at 90 miles an hour. Constantly blowing on his hand. You're allowed to do that today because of the cool conditions here in New York. The strike, and it's two and one, and again, Sheffield appears to be miffed. The home plate umpire. Been quite a few miffed hitters in this game so far. So that's like a pretty good pitch. Fastball inside corner. Sheffield jumping back. In the air down the right field line, McCarty goes jumping over towards the tarp and can't make the catch. And we talk about uh, Fenway Park having very little foul territory. Uh, might be less here at Yankee Stadium with the exception of right behind home plate. McCarty reaching over the top but can't quite make the play. It's uh, just about nothing down both lines as far as foul territory. The dugouts are fairly close to the field, but the big area is behind home plate. And this actually used to be even bigger because they put in about two rows here of uh, extra seats. I guess two bases was a possibility. Oh, absolutely, bit. yeah. We saw Jason Veritek do it. See, this part here over the last couple of years is all new. Two and two to Gary Sheffield. Alex Rodriguez at second base. And the bender in there for strike three. Pedro Martinez with his fourth strikeout concludes the fourth inning. Red Sox on top 2-0. Well, a very timely strikeout for Pedro Martinez to conclude last inning. Now Pedro throwing the curveball now to Derek Jeta. Throws it directly at him. It breaks and hits the inside corner. G Jeta was bending that back. No chance. And the struggles offensively continue for the Yankees. Bellhorn leads it off and fouls it above us into the upper deck. It'll be Bellhorn Ortiz and Ramirez expected here in the sixth inning. Strikeout victim in the first inning. He walked in the fourth and came around to score the Red Sox first run on the two run home run by Manny Ramirez that has stood up as the only run so far in this game. The Yankees threatening for the first time in the last half of the fifth inning. And there were some boos for Derek Jeter as he struck out to end last inning. On the ground to Enrique Wilson. A quick bobble, but time to recover. We're out number one. Well, do you need Red Sox tickets? Visit RedSox.com and join the replay program. Replay makes it safe and easy for season ticket holders to sell the tickets they're unable to use. Visit RedSox.com and click on the replay button. Replay, your official source for pre-owned Red Sox tickets. So one down and it brings up David Ortiz one of only two Red Sox hits Ortiz with his single in the first inning and a high fly ball down the left field line Jeter going a long way Matsui coming over and it is a fair ball it'll jump up into the seats and they'll give Ortiz second base Wow I'll tell you what this is as far from Yankee baseball as you're going to see. Matsui, what is Matsui doing? This is his ball. He just stopped. And he's expecting Jer Derek Jeter to make this play going that far? No chance. Here comes Matsui. Now watch him. He's just going to stop. Wow. Well, I'll tell you. That's all I can say. <laughs> they were sloppy on, uh, on Friday night in particular. And again this afternoon. I mean, look at Vasquez. He's pitching out here on three days rest. He's pitching great. 
And he's getting no help at all. Would you to go about 50 yards to get to that? And then. And it's unbelievable. <laughs> so one on David Ortiz at second base to see if the Red Sox can convert on this opportunity. As Manny Ramirez takes the strike from Vasquez. They really have gotten a terrific pitching performance today from Vasquez. Seven strikeouts. Yeah, he's pitched his heart out here on three days rest in a game. Almost a must win in April for the Yankees. And uh, he just made that one 0 2 mistake to Manny Ramirez. And one more look at that home run by Manny Ramirez. No balls, two strikes. He gets the curveball and hits it a ton here at Yankee Stadium. Four of the five home runs that Ramirez has this season have come against the Yankees, so they've been very timely. The 0 2 is fouled off Posada. Joe Torre not concerned, at least not publicly, is uh, sat in today in his media press conference and is cool as he always is despite what is swirling around him here in New York to begin this season but that has really been part of the success for him is the cool calm demeanor that he gives off and much of these Yankees are doing the same softly lined in the center field for a base hit David Ortiz will be stopped by Dale Swaim at third base and Manny Ramirez is aboard with his second hit. Well, again, no balls, two strikes. Uh, the pitch previous was a fastball that Manny fouled off 0 and 2. Then he comes back with the changeup 0 and 2, and Manny gets the base hit to center field. Not a real good read by Ortiz. Uh, he kind of hesitated. And then once he did that, he had no chance of scoring. So you hang around me, Don, you meet all the big stars. That was, yeah. Well, I, I know that. I mean, just you alone is enough most of the time for me. Katie Couric was just uh, joining us in the booth here for about an inning. Very nice to see Katie. Second chance that I've had to meet her. Met her in spring training earlier this year. She's brought the Red Sox some good luck. She's actually interested in buying some Remdog products. You know, the pink, really? pink hat, pink shirt, but uh, why wouldn't you? She has to pay like everybody else. <laughs> you can't just mix in a free one. <laughs> 2 and 0 to Kevin Millar. David Ortiz at third base, Manny Ramirez at first. Red Sox threatening here in the sixth inning, trying to add on to their 2 0 lead. And the strike to make it 2 and 1. Javier Vasquez on just three days' rest coming out here for the Yankees. Gave up the two run home run to Manny Ramirez in the fourth. Hands the ladder on Millar that time. And a foul tips it two and two. Vasquez into the sixth inning still has very good stuff. The rising fastball here by uh, Kevin Millar. The Yankees have action in their bullpen for the first time. The loser of yesterday's game, Paul Quantrill. Nasty breaking pitch and Millar somehow gets a piece of it lunging across the plate. Well, last year for Vasquez, he recorded nine, ten strikeout games, the second most among all major league pitchers behind Kerry Wood, who had 11. Two two is in there for strike three. Millar disagrees, but he'll take with him the eighth strikeout for Vasquez. And 
Millar down for out number two. That's great pitching by Vasquez. You know, he throws the curveball that Millar just barely fouls off, and then he comes right back to the inside corner with the fastball. This is the way they are now counting strikeouts <laughs> at Yankee Stadium. <laughs> Very creative. <laughs> well, the rocket's gone, right? Yes, that's correct. Jason Veritek takes strike one. Well, there are eight Grady's on the board for Javier Vasquez. And the last two have been looking, David Ortiz and Millar. Vertag slices it foul, and it's one and two. Vasquez has exceeded the century mark today. He's up at 101 pitches. And two outs in the sixth inning, and this will bring them to their feet again at Yankee Stadium. Veritek lifts it to left center field. Matsui is over and under to make the catch round number three, and the Red Sox strand a pair. We played five and a half. Boston on top, two nothing. Back at Yankee Stadium, two nothing. The Red Sox have the lead, and some more sloppy play this afternoon by the Yankees. They do have two errors in the game. Back in the first inning, Giambi not calling off Posada, and the ball dropping. In the fifth inning, a ground ball of Derek Jeter. Not a great throw, but certainly one that could have been handled. Giambi lets that get by him. And then, of course, Matsui stopping on the pop-up, thinking it's going to be a foul ball. And that ends up being a double for David Ortiz. Some sloppy play turned in by the Yankees. Bernie Williams to lead it off in the bottom of the sixth inning. He's 0 for 2. Grounding out to first and flying out to center. Is the breaking ball in there for a strike and Bernie with words for Phil Cuzzy. Bernie Williams, Alex Rodriguez, and Jason Giambi expected here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Yankees posted their best threat last inning in the bottom of the fifth they had runners at second and third with one out when Pedro was able to get Enrique Wilson to pop out to short then he struck out Jeter looking it was the sixth strikeout for Pedro as he's now ahead of Bernie Williams in the fourth inning it was a bit of a test for him in terms of the pitch count and again with many pitches last inning but again the Yankees had two in scoring position 86 total pitches, 53 for strikes. The one two is strike three to Bernie Williams. Pedro closed the fifth with a strikeout of Jeter. He opens the sixth with a strikeout of Bernie Williams. Once again, Pedro right on the corners, this time with the cut fastball on the outside corner. Last pitch to Bernie was inside, the strikeout pitch outside corner. So seven strikeouts for Pedro Martinez and here is Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez lining to right in the first on a nice catch by Millar. Then he singled to right and stole a base in the fourth inning. Continued action in the Yankees bullpen as there had been last inning. And with Javier Vasquez now up over 100 pitches. And it had been uh, Paul Quantrill last inning. It was up in the Yankees pen. And it continues to be Paul Quantrill. Last time out 
for Vasquez. He threw 113 pitches. And again, he's just back on three days rest. Well, he certainly gave the Yankees what they were hoping for today. You know, he made that one mistake to Manny, and Manny jumped all over it for the two run home run. But other than that, only four hits a lot. He was very, very good. And the strike to even at two and two. You imagine the uh, Yankee pitchers thinking that at this stage of the season they would be scuffling and having their team not be able to score runs for them. No. <laughs> I can't imagine that was even in their mind. To right field and struck well. Millar is headed back to the track. It's over his head and off the wall. Millar plays the carom quickly as a run into second base with a one out double. Third time in this one that he has gone the opposite way. Uh, see, there's the difference in A-Rod this weekend compared to last weekend in Boston. Last weekend in Boston, he was trying to pull everything. Every curveball the Red Sox threw up there, he was trying to pull. Now, A-Rod's back to himself. He's taking that pitch, very similar to Manny, staying back, but this time going the other way and up over the head of Kevin Millar, right at the bottom of the wall. But I mean that's a huge difference from one week to the next week in A-Rod. Just now using the opposite field, staying on the ball longer. And with the hit, he's now hit safely in seven straight. A streak that began in the ninth inning against Keith Folk on Monday in Boston. And he's standing at second base with one out. Here's Jason Giambi, 0 for 2. On the ground, a foul ball outside of first. Well, for the third consecutive inning, the Yankees have a runner in scoring position. Unable to do anything with them in the fourth and fifth. We'll see what their fate is here in the sixth inning. And Giambi down 0 and 2. Well, get the Globes of World Winning Sports coverage every day. Call 800 985 335 for 50% off home delivery. The Boston Globe, your world unfolding daily. Giambi grounds it with the shift on right to Crespo and short right. And he throws out Giambi. Crespo serving as kind of the rover out there. And there's two down on to third goes Rodriguez. Let's check in with Eric Freed. Eric? Well, with a great performance being put on by Pedro Martinez, I thought it was only appropriate to make the Ford fans of the game, the K-men who made the trip down here, you don't really notice because they're not wearing the makeup here today. Where's the makeup, Dominicus? You got to lay low a little bit here at uh, Yankee Stadium? Yeah, we're in K-cognito today. <laughs> <laughs> but look at these seats. I mean, we're right close to the field, but you wanted to be somewhere else here today. You didn't want to be right here. No, we want to be in the bleachers, but sometimes you got to settle for box seats. They did it today, and they've uh, been a part of a huge Red Sox contingent. Whenever you look around the park today, we've seen a lot of red, and they've been loud here today. Our Ford fans of the game that came in here in the Bronx. Fellas. I like that, Eric. K-cognito. <laughs> Gary Sheffield a hitter one for two. Batting with Alex Rodriguez at third base and two down. Popped up. Foul. Back comes Veritek. He discards the helmet and the mask and makes the catch to end the inning. Alex Rodriguez will be stranded at third base. Pedro gets his way out of the jam again. Through six. It's two nothing Red Sox. Back at Yankee Stadium with the Red Sox on top, two to nothing. The Red Sox and the Yankees each with four hits. And as we head here to the top half of the seventh inning, it ends the day for Javier Vasquez. An impressive six innings, giving up just the two runs, and he turns things over to Paul Quantrill. See the numbers on the screen for Paul Quantrill. Uh, made his eighth appearance yesterday against the Red Sox, allowing an earned run in one inning. It took the loss in that ball game, hit a batter. Two and one in the season. Appearance number nine for Quantrill. Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by New England Toyota dealers. 
by Pepsi. And by Volvo, the official vehicle of the Boston Red Sox. David McCarty to lead it off here in the top of the seventh inning. Representing the bottom third of the Red Sox order anticipated here in the seventh. McCarty, Crespo, and Reese. It's awfully grounded and to the backhand goes Quantrill to knock it down. The throw is just in time to get McCarty. And Quantrill helping himself out front number one. Well, another close play at first base and almost a collision there between uh, David McCarty and uh, Giambi. That throw was tailing back in toward the base runner and uh, Giambi actually makes a pretty nice play on that one. Quantrill to the backhand bobbles it has a little trouble picking it up has to rush to throw and a nice play by Giambi at first base. Cesar Crespo for two tried to bunt his way on in the third and was thrown out by Posada. There's this one sky to left center field that goes Bernie Williams carrying him almost to the warning track. And he's there to make the catch on Crespo and there's two down. Let's take a look at what's on tap brought to you by Heineken as the Red Sox have tomorrow off Tuesday through Thursday they will welcome the Tampa Bay Devil Rays to Fenway on Nesson at Texas on Friday the Red Sox UPN 38 in Boston Nesson outside of Boston and Nesson on Saturday and then the country will be watching on Sunday night uh, the ESPN Sunday night game from the ballpark in Arlington. Red Sox home for just three short days and then it is right back out on the road again. Yeah, we'll get to watch that game also, Don, from Cleveland. That's right. With a, an unusual night yeah, off. Yeah, very and rare Sunday night off. It's not often that we get the chance to take a quick jump and get on over to Cleveland from Texas. Red Sox will be heading to Cleveland for three and then back home again. Nice fouls it off up into the upper deck. He struck out swinging in the third and reached on an error by Derek Jeter in the fifth inning. The Yankees have committed two errors. Well, also for the Red Sox, there'll be a chance to play some new teams coming up here that they have not faced. Yeah, Texas playing pretty good baseball, too. Yankees have made 17 errors this season and 11 have come against the Red Sox. And this is the second meeting between the two. If you thought you were going to worry about something coming into the season of your Joe Torre, I guess it would be perhaps the starting pitchers. And that is something that has not been a problem, but the offense has Reese goes lunging and strikes out Quantrill enjoys a one two three seven seventh inning stretch time from Yankee Stadium Red Sox on top two nothing back at Yankee Stadium the Red Sox have the two nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning Pedro Martinez with seven strikeouts on the day and we'll take a look at five of them Pedro to Derek Jeter right here with the breaking ball a fastball inside corner to Giambi. Another fastball there to Enrique Wilson. Nasty curveball to Gary Sheffield. And away with the fastball, the cut fastball, I should say, to Bernie Williams. Now we'll take a look at the Nissan pitching line for Pedro Martinez. 97 pitches on the day as he works here into the last half of the seventh inning. But Pedro now with 28 strikeouts on the season. 15 of them swinging and 13 looking. And as we get to the bottom of the seventh, uh, this will probably be the last inning for Pedro. He's getting into that area with that, you know, the 106 pitch area, which will come maybe during this inning. One of the most pitchers that he has thrown this season in any start. We're going to go back to April 10th. And the win against the Toronto Blue Jays, seven and two-thirds innings, 106 pitches for him then. That's the most he's thrown. 
The season is 106. The Red Sox with Scott Williamson up in the bullpen. And on to the last half of the seventh inning we go. Jorge Posada, Hideki Matsui, and Ruben Sierra to face Pedro Martinez. The Yankees have had runners in scoring position in each of the last three innings. And while the Red Sox were miserable with their runners in scoring position conversion yesterday, the Yankees are perhaps as miserable today. They're 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. And therefore, the strike, and it's 1 and 1. And the Red Sox 0 for 19 with runners in scoring position. In yesterday's 3 to 2 victory in 12 innings. According to Stats Inc., you got to go back to 1974 for that number, and it was the Pittsburgh Pirates who went 0 for 19 in men in scoring position. So, first, McCarty's going to need help, and Pedro's there to cover for the first out. David McCarty, very good defensive first baseman. Does a very solid job over at first base. I think he's particularly good at uh, that I've noticed, uh, Don, the fact that the nice underhand flip that he gives those pitches covering first base. Nice and soft. He leads him to the bag. One down for Hideki Matsui. Matsui hit one to the track in left field in the second inning and a ball that Manny caught. And then Matsui struck out looking in the fifth. To left center field, Damon moving over, looking up into the raindrops, handling out number two. Well, the Red Sox return to Fenway Park Tuesday night to face Rocco Baldelli and the Tampa Bay Devil Rays in a three-game series. A limited number of tickets are still available. Some tickets also remain for the Cleveland Indians' lone 2004 visit to Fenway, May 10th through the 12th. You can get yours today online at RedSox.com or by calling 877-RED-SOX-9. If ever there was an inning that Pedro needed a small pitch count, it was this one, and he has had it. That is pitch number six of the inning. He's already got two outs, and that pitch count up to 103. Sierra pops it up, foul off third. Let's see if Bellhorn has room, and he does not. Well back into the seats. Pedro's longest outing was his last outing, which he went seven and two thirds innings against the Blue Jays. Part of that win, the Red Sox winning four to two. And here today, he's got two down in the seventh inning. To his left goes Bellhorn. And on to first to retire Sierra, and Pedro enjoys a nifty one, two, three, seventh inning. We played seven. Red Sox on top two to nothing. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy, along with Eric Freed, back at Yankee Stadium. The Red Sox on top two nothing as we head to the eighth. And Pedro Martinez getting some congratulations after a 105 pitch performance today at Yankee Stadium and an outstanding effort. Uh, Pedro likely done as the Yankees have changed pitchers. Gabe White comes on for the eighth. Eighth appearance of the season for Gabe White, the first since facing the Red Sox last Monday in Boston. Johnny Damon leading it off 0 for 3 so far today. Fouled out in the first, struck out swinging in the third, and then lined out to right in the fifth inning. Hello, very lucky, Don, that uh, we have added an analyst to our group, but that doesn't really want to talk. But we're very happy to have it here, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against you, Jerry, but if I had to vote for an analyst, and I think you do a great job, but I think Katie would do an outstanding job with us as our analyst. Yeah. 
I know Matt Laura, that's for sure. No. I, I know. <laughs> well, she's done a great job for us. She's helped us with some statistical information. Yeah. She's done very, very well here today on this rainy day. Of course, that is the lovely Katie Couric, who is with us in the booth. 2-2 two -two misses to Damon in the full countdown. Ball four to Johnny Damon and a leadoff walk to begin the eighth. Well, this player profile is brought to you by Sovereign Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox cable network. Damon with the Red Sox on top two to nothing. Might be on the move as Bellhorn stands in. The Yankees using their third pitcher of the day in Gabe White. Now the Yankees have had some sloppy play out there this afternoon, and of course, with the rain coming down now and making the field. Uh, a little bit wet. Uh, it makes it even tougher for the infielders and outfielders on anything hit. It's a good time to hit when the infield's wet. Ball skip through quicker. Tom Gordon loosening in the bullpen for the Yankees. I always wondered about that rain in hitting. It's okay. It doesn't bother you at all. No, as far once, as ball coming once in. Once you get the rain off the billy of cap, and uh, it's it's actually good for hitters. Or a few years ago, guys would always dry their bat off. Is there anything to that? Because you don't see quite as much of them when guys drying their bat. Is that my imagination? I see. He just dried his bat <laughs> okay, off. Okay, so. I didn't know. Maybe I'm just not as observant as I once was. <laughs> a couple of throws to first base. A 1-0 count. Possible hit and run count. Also a possible steal count for Johnny Damon, so that's why I gave White throwing a couple of times over to first. Melhorn lifts it to right. Gary Sheffield almost in his tracks out there. Able to make the catch for the first out. Well, stay tuned after the game for W New England's Red Sox postgame show. WB Mason's extra innings, a complete Red Sox wrap-up, followed by Granite City extra innings extra. After the last inning, the action is just beginning. So one away, and here's David Ortiz with Johnny Damon at first base. Ortiz has two of the four hits the Red Sox have today a single in the first and a double in the sixth inning wrapped around a strikeout that he had in the fourth inning and Vasquez in his six innings gave up four hits two to David Ortiz and two to Manny Ramirez and that was it that's a good solid performance by Vasquez on the three days rest for Joe Torre. I like him Don that's the second time we've seen him and he was not shot the first time at Fenway Park he was much better today and I think he's going to be a real good pitcher for the Yankees. The Yankees really have reloaded with the loss of Andy Pettit and Roger Clemens. And they have come back with the likes of Kevin Brown and Javier Vasquez and Seems that's sort of what the Yankees do a lot of times year in year out just kind of reload come back with a new crew. Yeah but how about this I mean they think Clemens is going to retire. <laughs> he does retire for about two months and then decides to come back with Houston. You think they still like to have Clemens in their rotation right now off to the four and oh start. Yes I would say they would. Ortiz it's a fly ball to center field Bernie Williams. Moves over and makes the catch for out number two. Damon, who was at first base with nobody out, is still there now with two down. And Joe Torre bounces out of the dugout with Ramirez at the plate. Looks like he's going to go get Tom Gordon. Well, the 32 year old left hander, Gabe White, after the walk of Damon, has gotten two quick outs. And the Yankees will go to the pen again. The Red Sox on top, two nothing. Well, with two down here in the eighth inning and a runner at first, the new Yankees pitcher is Tom Gordon. 
Tom Gordon making his 10th appearance of the season second of this series he worked in his ninth appearance uh, yesterday two innings against the Red Sox had one walk and three strikeouts he's held Manny Ramirez to a 192 batting average in his career Manny with two hits today a strikeout in the first then the two run home run in the fourth which has been the only scoring for either side and then the single in the sixth inning. A pretty nice day today for Manny. As Jerry mentioned, just the 192 batting average against Gordon, but he does have a home run. Gordon signing a two year deal with the Yankees, signing as a free agent prior to this last year. After working with the Chicago White Sox in 2003, he was 7 and 6 with a 3.16 earned run average in 66 games. And kind of a bounce back season for him after various health problems. The Red Sox have action of their own in the bullpen. Scott Williamson. As the Red Sox bullpen, wow, 22 and two thirds innings without giving up a run. They have really been great this season. And if you had to point to one area, that the Red Sox have been markedly better. It is that this season. This one skips away from Posada, and up goes Damon in the scoring position. Now this will be interesting. Now three-one count on Manny with first base open. They may just walk Manny and start all over against Kevin Millar. Only runs of the afternoon coming on this two-run home run by Manny Ramirez. His fifth home run of the year back in the fourth inning with Mark Bellhorn on and now with the count three and one they're just going to put Manny on and the intentional walk to Ramirez. So two down and runners at first and second now and Kevin Millar will be standing in. Lyre well, reached in the second inning as he was hit by a pitch. Since then, a line out to the shortstop and a strikeout looking in the sixth inning. One of the eight strikeouts for Javier Vasquez. Falling behind 2 and 0. Oh. You mentioned he pitched two innings yesterday, Don. Look, look quite a shot here today, bouncing back uh, from yesterday's performance. Damon at second, Ramirez at first. The first chance for the Red Sox since the sixth inning. Red Sox with one out in the sixth that runners at the corners with Ed Vasquez in his final inning. Got Millar to strike out and Veritek to fly out. The Red Sox couldn't add to their lead. And Millar pops it up foul ground. Posada flips the mask and now moves quickly to the Red Sox dugout and can't make the catch. Very late adjustment by Posada and he couldn't get over there. That second time today, Posada's had to go to the Red Sox dugout to try to make a play. He did make the first one, but this time in more of a sprint. He started off slow like he was going to be out of play. Then he had to pick up speed and couldn't quite get there in time. And again, that fence uh, helps out. So Millar gets another chance. And it's three and one now to Millar. Waiting on deck is Jason Veritek. Although there are two outs in the inning. Millar right now in a six game hitting streak would love to extend it right here and give the Red Sox a, another run. And a little bit more room to breathe. And Gordon wants to see the signs again from Posada. A 
Boy, these guys can't get on the same page. Gordon doesn't seem to be happy with anything Posada's throwing down for a sign. Well, Stottlemyre on the phone. Nobody warming right now in the Yankees bullpen, but some stirring going on down there. Looks like somebody is going to be warming now. Scott Williamson looking on from the Red Sox bullpen as Tom Gordon now knows what he's going to throw as he and Posada have talked it over. And Malar fouls it off for full count. Now the runners will be off. And a base hit for Malar very well could score Johnny Damon. All Yankee outfielders move back about three or four or five steps. Three two count two outs. Three two pitch to Millar is fouled off. Runners off will have to retreat to their bases. Proctor up in the Yankees bullpen, the right hander. They have already used Quantrill, Gabe White, and now Tom Gordon all out of the pen. The seventh pitch of this at bat for Kevin Millar. Swings and misses. It gets away from Posada briefly. Who will have to throw him out and does. The strikeout and the putout. He goes two to three and the Red Sox strand two. On to the bottom of the eighth. Two nothing Boston. Back at Yankee Stadium and a defensive change for the Red Sox. After Malire was retired, Capo takes over for him defensively in right field. And the Red Sox have changed their pitcher, Scott Williamson. Seventh appearance of the season for Williamson. Six and two thirds innings, two hits allowed. He has not allowed an earned run. Five walks and five strikeouts. He got that big double play yesterday with the bases loaded. You see Lee on that screen. He is going to be pinch hitting for Enrique Wilson. Let's check in with Eric Freed. Eric. Well, Scott Williamson comes in now, and this has been a great run by this bullpen. They've only given up six hits in those last 22.2 innings. And talking to Williamson, he says they've just got a bunch of guys who can get it done. They've been in big spots before. Every one of the guys in the bullpen can go out there and throw up zeros every day. And, you know, uh, I think that helps the manager make those decisions. When you have the Embry and the, and the Timlin coming in like that, we lose our closer. You know, he pitches two innings, and you got Timlin that can come in and close out a game. So. I think that he can use us all in basically any situation out there, and he knows that we have guys behind each other to pick each other up. So I think it um, definitely benefits us by having the guys that we do in the bullpen. Well, Scott Williamson on in relief of Pedro Martinez to work the bottom of the eighth inning. The Red Sox on top by two, two to nothing, and Travis Lee pinch hitting for Enrique Wilson. Wilson had been 0 for two. Lee pops it up. Veritek coming back. There's room. And makes the catch route number one. We've seen a lot of foul pop up action for both catchers here today. Yeah, we really have done. And you know, it's it's not what you want to do as a hitter because of all that room behind home plate. That ball was pretty far back. Veritek had plenty of room to spare. So one down and it's back up to the top of the order for Derek Jeter. 0 for 3. He has struck out twice and fly to right. And the slump has extended for Jeter. It's now 0 for his last 24. And then the butt try fouled off. I think there's some extracurricular activity going on above us up in the third deck. I think you are correct. See everybody kind of looking up above us from down below in the lower bowl. Did you say the other day that I misunderstand you? Someone actually, yeah, there, there's your action. This is uh, getting a little testy up there. Yeah, you know, well, <laughs> hey. <laughs> the 0 1 to Jeter. And he fouls it off. Did I hear you say, was it yesterday, that someone actually fell onto the screen here? Yes. The stadium? They fell out of the top deck and they landed on the screen. 
That's behind home plate. And the guy laid there like he was hurt badly. Yeah. So everything stopped. All the play stopped. Everybody was looking up at him, the crowd, the players, the umpire. And then he just pops up. There was nothing wrong with him. He was just faking it. <laughs> Were you doing the game here then? Yeah. Wow. Williamson ahead of Jeter, 0-2. He's already struck out twice today. The hat trick for Derek Jeter, who strikes out for the third time today. This is good for out number two in the eighth. Williamson goes to the breaking ball away and off the plate. And that's three times for Jeter. Twice on curve balls, one time on a cut fastball. Boy, the backside not the not there for Jeter on that one. Just tried to reach out and foul it off. Goal for his last 25. The longest slump of his career. Already was the case coming into today. Bernie Williams 0 for 3 today. The particulars for Pedro Martinez. Seven innings today for the Red Sox. Four hits. He gave up no runs. He walked one and had seven strikeouts. Grounded down the first baseline, a fair ball. McCarty fields and tags the bag alone. And Williamson enjoys a 1 2 3 8. We played eight from Yankee Stadium. Red Sox on top 2 0. Don Orsillo and Jerry Remy back at Yankee Stadium. Some defensive changes for the Yankees. Miguel Cairo now at second base. And the new pitcher, Mariano Rivera. Pitched two innings yesterday for Rivera. This is his 522nd career appearance to tie Dave Rigetti as the club's all time leader in most games pitched. And uh, Torrey bringing in here, trying to shut the Red Sox down in the ninth and keep it a two run ball game. Veritek with good numbers 308 against Mariano Rivera as he leads it off in the top of the ninth. Veritek, McCarty, and Crespo expected to bat in the inning. And for the second straight day, the Yankees bullpen has helped them out as well with the Quantrill, White, and Gordon all being used prior to the arrival of Mariano Rivera and uh, none of them gave up any runs. Who mentioned Veritek with good numbers against Rivera. I think the reason why is that he anticipates that cut fastball and he opens up a little bit to try to catch it on the sweet spot of the bat. Off the glove of Rivera out towards Cairo off balance but in time to get Veritek. This play turned in by the new second baseman Miguel Cairo. See there's a good example of what I'm talking about now. He's looking for the ball in and you'll see Veritek on the swing pull that front shoulder out leave a little bit soon. The problem here is the ball's away and then it goes toward the end of the bat. But look at the shoulder right there for Veritek. It's pulling out. He's looking for an inside fastball that inside cut fastball. And I think that's the way you've got to approach Rivera. If he throws you away as a left-handed hitter, you've got to give it to him. Well, here is the right-handed hitting David McCarty. Gets the start at first base today for the Red Sox. And 0 for 3 showing so far for David. Now as we look out toward the Red Sox bullpen, we do not see any action. Folk were two innings in the game yesterday. Get so used to seeing him every day that yeah. it seems strange not to see him up. It really does. Not only is Folk not up, nobody is up. After Williamson pitching a 1 2 3 8th, perhaps it'll be Williamson going for the six outs. He's gotten three so far in pretty quick fashion as the Yankees went one, two, three in the eighth. The 
the 2 2 to McCarty. This grounded foul over by the on deck circle, which is occupied by Cesar Crespo, who waits on deck. And a pretty consistent light rain falling throughout this game here today. And nothing that would stop action today, but it has been just a wet afternoon at Yankee Stadium. Inside ties up McCarty, and it's a full count. Ball four, and McCarty's on. That's the fourth walk given up by Yankees pitching, the first by Rivera. And it brings up Cesar Crespo, who's 0 for 3 today from the number 8 spot in the Red Sox order. Jerry, as you mentioned, with uh, Rivera coming in here, this means that uh, he is at 522 appearances to tie Dave Rigetti for first place on the Yankees all time list. And on the first baseline foul fielded by Giambi, but a foul ball. Saying that Williamson comes back into the game in the ninth inning. I was just checking the numbers. Uh, they'll be facing A Rod, Giambi, and Sheffield. And uh, none of those players have a hit in their career against Williamson. A Rod 0 for 2, Sheffield 0 for 5, and Giambi 0 for 1. And was able to dispose of Travis Lee, Derek Jeter, and Bernie Williams. He will have to face, as I mentioned, the heart of that order. A 1 1. <laughs> Fouled off, and it's 1 and 2. Rivera, the fifth pitcher used by the Yankees today. The runs the Red Sox have are given up by their starter, Javier Vasquez, in six innings, giving up two runs. Two and two now to Crespo. Red Sox fans here at Yankee Stadium yelling, let's go Red Sox, and that's not playing very well with the Yankee fans. <laughs> Those are our Cayman incognito, are they not? Swing and a miss, and Crespo strikes out, so Rivera comes back to get it. First strikeout for Rivera. And there's two down. This game summary is brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. You look at the Yankees offense, which the men in scoring positions had a very tough day. The top of that order, Jeter, 0 for 4 and 0 for his last 25. And you look down through that order, a tough day again for the Yankees. But A-Rod with two hits. This series, the Yankees are hitting 156 as a team. A-Rod firing to first to get Pokey Reese. And the Red Sox are gone on the top of the night. It's on to the bottom of the night from New York. Red Sox on top 2 nothing. Bottom of the ninth inning back at Yankee Stadium with the Red Sox on top 2 nothing. Scott Williamson on the hill. A 1 2 3 8 for Williamson back out there for the night. And the Yankees sending their best. Alex Rodriguez, Jason Giambi, and Gary Sheffield to the plate in the ninth. And Rodriguez takes strike one. The Red Sox are three outs away from a sweep of the New York Yankees. Two hits today for a rod a single and a double. Well, hard stuff inside. Pedro Martinez worked the first seven innings today, giving up no runs, four hits, walked one, struck out seven, and Pedro threw 105 pitches. It's been Williamson since. And 
And it's one and two now to A Rod. The Yankees are two games under 500 coming into today's action at 8 and 10. Well, the Red Sox are looking for their 12th win of the year, 11 and 6 so far for Terry Francona. And it evens up at two and two. Big zone all day. Because he behind the plate, but I think a correct call here. This ball did to be looked to be down and away. A two-two from Williamson to A Rod. And a full count now. Yankees looking for a base runner to give themselves a shot to tie things up. And a full count to Alex Rodriguez to begin the bottom of the ninth. Stays alive as he fouls it back to the backstop and will do it again. Williamson throwing hard too, 92, 93 with that fastball. 3-2 count right down the middle, a little late for uh, A. Rod on this swing. Giambi waits on deck, but first a bit of business here between Williamson and A. Rod. On the ground to third. Bellhorn is there. The throw is good. And A-Rod is out number one in the bottom of the ninth. Now Williamson just stayed after him with those fastballs. Remember, it's been a lot of curveballs that uh, he has seen uh, in both series. But Williamson sticking with that fastball in that, in that at bat and gets the ground ball out to third base. When you have to swing at it, it might be a little bit low, but you can't take that chance on a 3-2 count. Giambi 0 for 3, including the strikeout in the second inning. And on the ground, up the middle, Reese ranging back a second, setting and throwing in time to get Giambi. And there's two down in the ninth inning. Red Sox one out away from sweeping and taking their sixth game in seven tries against New York. Now, Pokey Reese was supposed to be the second baseman on this team, and he makes a play over at second base. Going to his right, is able to get in front of the ball and then plenty of time to throw out Giambi. A Rod. A little bit of frustration here in uh, the Bronx. Williamson has faced five Yankees. He's retired them all. Here's Gary Sheffield with two down in the ninth. Sheffield one for three. to the backstop and it's one and one. <laughs> How about that swing by Sheffield? Wow. He was at it trying to hit that ball at Connecticut. If he connected he might have. Wow. Straight back. That is a great look at a camera. What do they say right into your living room? Yes. That's what announcers say. Some do. The one one. Grounded foul and it's one and two to Gary Sheffield. He has never had a hit against Williamson. Two down in the last half of the ninth inning. Red Sox on top two to nothing. Williamson staring in to find out what he'll throw from Jason Veritek. Reaches in and brings the one-two pitch. Jeffield strikes out the Red Sox 
Mets have swept the New York Yankees. The first sweep of the Yankees in New York since September 10th through the 12th of 1999. The Red Sox have taken the first six of seven games against the Yankees this season. And Manny Ramirez with the two-run home run. All the Red Sox needed today. Supplying all the offense, and the Red Sox win it two to nothing.